Chào mừng quý vị và các bạn quay trở lại với chương trình Tôi Việt Nam trên kênh SVNC với cuộc trò chuyện cùng ông Norman O'Rourke là giám đốc trung tâm kỹ thuật cao của GE Việt Nam. Welcome back. Thank you. I understand your scopes in subsea industry have included the developments of subsea fuels architectures, system design, manufacturing, testing and offshore installation. Could you share your point of view on the challenges for Vietnam oil and gas industry? in terms of the technical aspect. Mm. So Vietnam's industry is starting to mature with the technology it currently has of using platforms in fairly shallow water offshore off the Vietnam coast. But as those develops, developments start to age, we need to find new resources to keep supplying the demand from Vietnam for oil, gas, energy. This means as we move into deeper water, further mm. away from the Vietnam coastline, it creates new challenges for the equipment. We can't take the existing solutions um, because they become either not cost effective, mm -hmm. the price goes up very dramatically, or technically they're just not suitable um, for strengths or suitable for high pressures and high temperatures. So what we need to do is looking at bringing in technology that's been used in the rest of the world and bringing it to Vietnam for application here, modifying it to suit the challenges in Vietnam. So for oil and gas industry, how attractive is that in the eyes of the foreign investors or multinational companies like GE right now? For us, we supply equipment. Mm -hmm. we, we come to locations as well based on the international um, oil companies and national oil companies, so they create the demand. Um, rather than us, we're, we're more supplying the solutions for them to help mm -hmm. them develop that side. Um, but for us, you know, there's a lot of opportunities in Vietnam. We've chosen to be here, you know, for good business reasons, and we believe we'll continue to be here and continue to grow. For all the markets that right now you are in charge of, which is Australia and Singapore, um, mm. what is the connection with the Vietnam's market in terms of? Um, you know, transferring technology and skills and human mm. resources? I guess globally it's a specialized business. <clears throat> so we have global engineering teams working on global solutions, including my teams in Australia and Singapore. Vietnam is now fed into that global team. The challenges vary country by country based on pressures, temperatures, distance from the shore, but they're all fairly similar. But it's about developing it to the unique aspects of each location. Mm -hmm. So that's where the teams can come into play, understanding the local market. It's not just about the technical solution. It's not one size fits all. We have to customize it. And that can include to consider manufacturing locally, delivering mm -hmm. locally. We have equipment that can be hundreds of tons in weight. Does it make sense to ship it around the world from another location, or should we look at doing it locally? And that's where the team here can work with other locations that have looked at those challenges before and come up with solutions, mm. take their lessons learned, and apply them within Vietnam and to the market here. Mm -hmm. So GE has been uh, contributing to um, the development progress of the oil and gas industry in Vietnam by introducing the advanced innovative solutions and um, transferring technology expertise and knowledge. Mm -hmm. um, what is the role of the Vietnam's engineering center is playing in you know, a part of the big pictures of developing the oil and gas industry mm -hmm. in Vietnam? So, so far the engineering center here has worked on scopes of work from front-end engineering, looking at what's the best way to develop um, an oil field. Mm. We've looked at detail equipment design. We have people supporting testing of the equipment. We will develop further along the services business so that we can support our equipment when it's installed and ensure it operates reliably and for as long as necessary. And we also have a team currently working on new products. Mm -hmm. So we have a suite of new products coming in um, and they're being done at different locations around the world. 
And here we have some of that equipment that will go into that suite of solutions. So besides recruiting the local engineers for the subsea uh, portfolio at Vietnam Engineering Center, um, are there any kind of activities that you do to continue um, introducing the advanced innovative solutions for the oil and gas industry and transferring technology expertise and knowledge? I guess there's several ways to answer that question. The team here have open access into the GE's databases, mm. design tools and everything, so we can see everything. Mm. Um, but here at the moment, you know, innovation for us is about really growing the team. You know, they've come to us without the subsea knowledge, the subsea background, so for now it's about passing on the vast amount of experience and data collected over many years to the team here and really building their experience level. And as we do that, so they can start innovating and doing more, more new challenging innovation themselves. Mm. Uh, but at the same time, having new people that are driven lets them say, well, can you not try to do it this way? <laughs> and the experienced guy kind of sits there and goes, oh, maybe. Mm. So there's still value added, there's still growth. But in terms of some people's perceptions of innovation is about something brand new, a totally different way, mm. we're still you know, going up that experience curve in many cases in Vietnam. How is the opportunity for the Vietnamese engineers um, to go overseas mm. to get some training and they're exposed to international market? Yeah. It's a great question because I, I can tell <laughs> you that between now and December, I have more than 25% of my team overseas. Mm. Um, it's a great way to do the training, go work it's beside another them. experienced yeah. engineer. In some cases, they're seeing the equipment, they're working on the equipment, so it's no longer just a computer screen or something <laughs> on a piece of paper. You really feel mm -hmm. what it's like. In addition to that, the building links, back to the cultural aspect, they're developing links with different cultures, different people. So it means when they're sitting back in the Ho Chi Minh office, they get a question, they think, oh, I can call this guy I met last week. And the relationship's much easier. They know who the specialist is. So it makes life a lot easier for everybody. It's good for them. So, yeah, it's a great investment in sending these guys sure. overseas. Well, thank you so much for sharing. Have a good one in Vietnam. Thank you. Good luck. Thưa quý vị, vừa rồi là những chia sẻ của ông Norman O'Rourke, giám đốc trung tâm kỹ thuật cao của GE Việt Nam. À, về chủ đề là xây dựng à, trung tâm kỹ thuật cao Việt Nam Engineering Center cũng như là nền văn hóa cách tân sáng tạo của GE. Quý vị có thể xem lại chương trình này trên website fbnc.vn hoặc là góp ý và phản hồi chúng tôi vào trang facebook.com suyệt tô Việt Nam. Đến đây thì chương trình sẽ được phép được khép lại. Một lần nữa cảm ơn quý vị và các bạn đã quan tâm theo dõi. Thân ái, chào tạm biệt. <cười>